Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here. Your Jacksonville Jaguars, they are 1-0 atop the AFC South all by themselves after a big win over the Indianapolis Colts in Indy. Their first win in Indy since 2017, so a big Big win for the Jaguars going up there, getting a division road win. Awesome stuff. We're going to dive into offensive and defensive standouts and special team standouts throughout this week. We're going to start on the defensive side of the ball this time. Usually we start with the offense and work our way throughout the rest of the, the team. But I think the Jaguars defense deserves a lot of credit, a lot of kudos for the performance in this one on a lot of different levels. So we're going to dive into the defensive standouts first, kind of talk about what the Jaguars did on the defensive side of the ball this week. Um, here on this show. So really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. Talking about this game from a defensive standpoint, the Colts, from an overall talent perspective on offense, experience, uh, cohesion, the Colts offense isn't one of the bigger challenges in the NFL when you when you look at it from that perspective. But they have a really good head coach and offensive coordinator in Jim Bob Cooter. So I think you've got a really good uh, base for this offense, you know, play calling, scheme, all that stuff. They do have some good receiving talent and they have an absolute alien at quarterback in Anthony Richardson. So there were challenges for the Jaguars defense in this one. It wasn't just like they played some team that's going to roll over every single week. But the challenges that they faced in this one were not like the challenges you're going to face when you go up against the Kansas City Chiefs in Week 2 or the, the Buffalo Bills in London or, or the Bengals later in the season, right? But it was a very good start. Uh, schematically and the quarterback movement stuff, I think that is where it kind of is a challenge for the, for the Jaguars defense in this one. And they were able to uh, come out with flying colors. I thought they did a fantastic job defending Anthony Richardson, defending his legs, and adjusting to what Shane Steichen was trying to do on the offensive side of the ball. Again, a very good offensive mind in this league, a young and -and up-and-coming offensive mind. Uh, I think the Jaguars' defense played excellent overall. I really do. Um, Only 14 points allowed for the defense. Obviously, the Colts scored 21, but you had a touchdown come from a fluky play on the Jaguars' uh, offensive side of the ball, right? So only 14 points allowed, a ton of pressure applied on Anthony Richardson, both uh, guys winning one-on-ones, and uh, obviously you did get some blitz packages in there from Mike Caldwell. You're going to get that every single week, but uh, plenty of sacks as well, turnovers forced, tight coverage. They looked better in zone, in my opinion, than they did in man, but they were pretty damn good in both. Uh, When you look at the coverage on the back end, not too many missed tackles in this one. That was a key focus for the Jaguars this offseason. They were one of the worst teams in in terms of missing tackles last year, especially when you look at Rayshon Jenkins and Devin Lloyd. I thought they both played well today. Um, Held the Colts to 3 of 17 on third and fourth down conversions, which is awesome. Held them to 2.5 yards per carry. Three turnovers forced, plus... um, a bunch of fourth down stops, four fourth down stops for the Jaguars, four sacks, bunch of passes defended and and pass breakups, held Richardson in check with his legs. Great day for them, right? And I think you've seen the Jaguars really struggle with some of these quarterbacks that have uh, the dual threat ability in the past, especially with the ground game, but they had a really good day out there today. The whole defense played their asses off. Like, it was impressive. It really was. And again, yes, this was not the Chiefs or the Bengals or the Bills or anything like that. But it was the opponent you had in front of you, and I think they went out and they did a really good job overall. The MVP for the defense has to be Josh Allen. First third down of the game, he goes and uh, goes through three Colts that tried to either block or chip him to get to Anthony Richardson um, for a sack on third down. Very next play on the defensive side of the ball, the Colts are backed up after a Logan Cook punt. Gets a nice run stuff. He was an absolute monster. Best game of his career. Three sacks. Had to probably have close to 10 pressures in this one. He was making tackles all over the field, getting tackles for loss as well. Josh Allen played like a legitimate edge one, a guy that deserves all the money, right? And he is playing for a contract this year. He's in his final year of his rookie deal. The Jaguars picked up that fifth-year option. He's playing to get the biggest bag of his career. And if game one is any indication, Josh Allen is going to be paid among the very best 
pass rushers in the league if he continues to play that way. There's no doubt about that. Um, he has all the talent, all the skill, the motivation. Josh Allen was the Jaguars' defensive MVP. I think you also have to look at Foya Aluokun, though. No surprise, led the, league in ta- led the team in tackles. He may lead the league in tackles again this year after a 12-tackle debut. He was a man possessed. Uh, maybe one of his most complete games in Jackson, in my opinion. He was obviously great against the run, great in pursuit as well. But uh, the ability to go get that pass breakup at the end of the game, you know, called game in the end zone, one on one coverage with Michael Pittman, you would think of that as a mismatch for sure. But Foye Luke is able to go up and get his hand on the football, deflect it out of bounds, and again, call game. That was the last offensive play for the Colts. That one sealed the deal for the Jaguars. I think Foye Luke and going into his second year of this defense. And I think you can talk about you know a lot of the guys going into the second year of this defense. They're going to be that much better for it. And I think Foye Aluokun looked incredibly comfortable, very instinctive, and was just playing really fast out there, which he usually does. But I think that looked like it took even another step here against the Colts in week one. Andre Sisco, very good. A big stuff on, on a third down early in the game on a run blitz. Then he had a forced fumble, uh, you know, bringing Deion Jackson to the ground with Foya Luik in there. It looked like Cisco was the one who actually got his hand in and ripped the ball out. He was good in coverage overall as well. Uh, did give up a, a first down to Josh Downs there, the rookie out of North Carolina, a player I really like for the Colts. Unfortunate that they were able to nab him in the draft if you're a Jags fan because Josh Downs is really talented. But uh, Downs was just on an option route, you know, really difficult situation for Andre Cisco. But overall, Cisco played his ass off. Um, not sure that that one should have been a penalty where he was able to uh, land a pretty big hit on the tight end there. But I think Andre Cisco looked like he was in the second year of the system, third year in the league. He's starting to really play at a high level. And I think you saw that for a lot of last year as well. But I think the consistency uh, ramped up even more in this one. I think you'll see that throughout the 2023 campaign for him. Trayvon Walker, the 2022 first overall pick for the Jaguars. He had a sack at the end of the first half to, to send... Uh, the Colts back into the locker room with no points there. He was flying around making plays in his own right. He had six tackles. He had another quarterback hit, another tackle for loss. I think Trayvon Walker had the type of day you wanted to see from a guy who a lot of people have criticized. You know, he was always going to take a little bit more time to develop than like an Aiden Hutchinson coming out of Georgia. He just was not asked to do what Aiden Hutchinson was asked to do at Michigan, and he did not have the pass rush repertoire that Aiden Hutchinson had. But you see the development now, and you've seen him um, you know, make strides throughout training camp in the preseason with his pass rush plan, with his pass rush tool bag, and you saw it out there today. He had a really good game for the Jaguars. And I also want to just give props to Mike Caldwell out there. I think he called a really good game against a tough offense in terms of schematically what Shane Steichen tries to do to you with the RPO stuff, with the quick game stuff. Um, and, and Shane Steichen likes to take shots downfield. He said after the game, the Jaguars closed off the deep part of the field, and I think that's a big credit to Mike Caldwell and the secondary. Um, I think Caldwell, if this is the way it's going to go for the Jaguars' defense in 2023, it's going to go really well for Mike Caldwell as well. But uh, I do want to caution a little bit. This was a great performance by the entire defense, but again, not going up against the Bengals, the Bills, the Chiefs, etc. There, there are going to be teams that test this defense in different ways and are even more difficult to defend than obviously Shane Steichen, Anthony Richardson, and this Colts offense. But getting back into these um, into these standouts for me, I thought Trey Herndon played a really nice game from the nickel. He was able to get a PBU. He he was you know solid in coverage overall. I don't think he had any huge mistakes that you you were able to see. Again, not the biggest test this week with the Colts, but. Good for Trey Herndon going out there and playing a good game after having criticism placed on him all offseason. No Devon Hamilton. He's out for the first four weeks at least with the non-football back issue that he's got going on. Um, I think the Jaguars feel confident that he will be able to get back after the uh, the four weeks with the the reserve slash pup list there. But no Devon Hamilton. So I thought Foley, Fatu Kasi, Roy Robertson Harris, and Adam Gotts has all played really well in the middle for the Jaguars defense. They were not in base a ton, but those guys, they went out there and they did their job against the run. They were able to make it really difficult to get anything up the middle uh, against against the Jaguars defense running the ball. So shout out to them. 
playing really well. Tyson Campbell, he was in on two different turnovers, forced to fumble on fourth down, and was able to get an interception. On the interception, they gave Richardson a zone look. Uh, Campbell was the underneath defender, just kind of baiting Richardson. You can see why Richardson kind of thought that it was there. There was green grass you know, in between the receiver and any uh, underneath player, but Tyson Campbell quickly closed the gap and was able to go up and make an impressive interception, um, you know, uh, going up and getting it with two hands, having a leap up into the air, look really athletic doing it. Campbell was baiting him a little bit, but great play by Tyson Campbell. Did call him getting interception. Called a lot of the things that happened in, in this game if you go back and watch the Bold Predictions show. But uh, kudos to Tyson Campbell. He's a guy that deserves even more respect than he gets, and I think that uh, that's just going to continue to ramp up throughout this 2023 campaign, his third year in the league. I thought his counterpart on the opposite side, Darius Williams, was locked in too. Played really well, made a bunch of plays. I think none bigger than the PBU at the goal line and single coverage late in the game on Alec Pierce. Uh, Pierce has a size advantage over Darius Williams. Did not matter. Williams was in perfect position to go defend that pass. Congratulations to Darius Williams on another big game. You know, a lot of people give Tyson Campbell credit. Not enough people. Talk about Darius Williams as a really good outside corner, and that's exactly what he is in this league. So good for him. Another shout out to Devin Lloyd, who played very hard, played very well. I don't think he did anything that was like remarkable, but he didn't have any glaring mistakes, which is awesome. He played very physically. When he arrived at the ball, the ball carrier felt him, and uh, I think that he he was impressive overall for me. Didn't look lost at all in coverage, and that's what you want to see from a Devin Lloyd in year two. Rayshon Jenkins, I thought, was very good overall as well. Sticky in coverage, tight in coverage, and was making some plays coming downhill. And then my last little shout-out here, saw Yasir Abdullah in there late in the game. Saw him land an inside spin that forced Anthony Richardson to evade the pocket. Get this kid some more reps. I thought he looked really good. I think he's going to continue to grow. As long as you're able to feature him at times throughout games, I think the Jaguars should be doing that because I think he has the talent to become that edge three that you can really get excited about as a guy coming off the bench for you to try to go in there and get sacks and get pressures and make it difficult for opposing offenses to to throw the ball. So that will do it. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. Really appreciate your support. Support the channel. You can check out ginjag.com slash shop. Pick up some new Duval gear. You can also like, subscribe, hit that notification bell on YouTube. Y'all have a good one.